Turn that volume up. You know you want it. It's time for Women's Basketball TV with former NCAA champion, WNBA champion, business mogul and national TV personality, Fran Harris. Let's get it. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening in um, women's basketball? What's happening in women's basketball? Some people think it's brand new. Some people think it's just a newer version of what always been happening. What's your take overall on what's happening in women's basketball right now? I think it's a combination of both. I think um, you, you, we've always had a high level of women's basketball. You know, um, I just think the U.S. is catching up with what the rest of the world already knew. Overseas, they... They knew about it. They appreciated women's basketball and they compensated us for such, right? And so um, I think there's several things that has caused us to be at the moment that we are right now with women's basketball. I think the pandemic, it started during the pandemic, right? So, you know, there were some initiatives that the WNBA wanted to stand for. Um, they they supported kind of like Brianna. They put Brianna on the back of their shirts. Um, while they were in a bubble, they did a documentary that caused a lot of buzz with the WNBA. You had um, Brittany Griner, who unfortunately, you know, was a hostage in Russia. That brought a lot of attention to women's basketball. People for once knew somebody's name who played in the WNBA. Um, I think the transfer portals have caused this because now players can now build a like championship roster they can recruit each other and say hey let's win it all next year you transfer over here you're not happy over there transfer over here you know um i think what else has happened is nils have happened and so now players have to brand themselves i started to see players just take pictures without their uniforms with their hair down with lashes on and you know they're just making themselves very marketable so that they can be in position for nils right so now you hear all the human interest stories. You see all the side hobbies. They started businesses. They started foundations. They have a rap album out, you know, but players for years have had hobbies and other things on the side. I mean, Fran, you're like a serial entrepreneur. You cannot tell me this just started in your life and this <laughs> been doing this back when you played in Texas, you know, yep, yep. You know for me, I've been sewing since I played at the University mm -hmm. of Carolina. Charlotte Smith been singing and playing piano since, since before she played at North Carolina. So these things have been going on for years and years yeah. and years. It's just that yeah, the eyeballs. Yeah. The, the eyeballs. The timing is right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just finally, this is the day that we've prayed for though, Fran. You know, I, I remember playing in the ABL. It folded. I was one of the Fortunate, I was fortunate enough to, or blessed enough to land back on my feet in the WNBA. And we, and so then I didn't take it for granted. I was like, at any minute, the rug could be pulled from up under us, right? Mm -hmm. And so we didn't know from year to year if it was going to survive. People were like, five years from now, Lee won't be here. You know what I mean? Like the kids who are playing in high school now, they won't, it won't be here. And we just prayed that it would just continue. And then we looked up and it was the 25th anniversary. And we're like, wow, yeah. 25 yeah. years, you know? And once it hit that 25 year mark is when it kind of exploded. Um, licensings with the with the logo, people start buying the gear. Everybody can identify with the new WNBA logo, right? So now people are buying gear like crazy. And with college basketball, I think the skill level is better than back when we played because they could start earlier. These kids start right. when, when they're in the third grade. You know what I mean? We I started in the seventh grade. There wasn't even a team for me to play on until the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now they've got personal trainers. You know what I mean? So the skill level is better. Let's say, for example, when I played and I started in the seventh grade, my male counterparts started in the second and third grade. By the time we got to high school, you could not compare boys and girls high school basketball. You couldn't compare it because I had only been playing for two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For three years. They have been playing for years. So yeah, their skill level was way different than the girls. Now girls are starting earlier, just as early as the boys, right? You see more girls on boys' leagues. Before it might have been just that one kid, that right, one right. good, and they put her on a league with all boys, and that was very rare. Now you see that a lot. And now there's there's girls' teams, so they don't have to do that. And so now let me jump in. I mean, let me jump in and go to the. I got to jump in and go to. The, I want to get your thoughts on 
uh, first of all, did you do a bracket? And if so, how is your Final Four looking at this juncture in uh, what's happening right now this weekend? I did not do a bracket, but I predicted in the final game that it would be Iowa and South Carolina. I all wanted right. to I wanted LSU to be there. I wanted Southern Cal. I think the world wants to see South Carolina and that Iowa matchup. Um, now, Gino, you know, he has experience in the tournament, so they could spoil it for everybody, you know. But <laughs> those are the two teams that I felt like the world wants to see that. And women's bat, like just NCAA will make tons of money if those two teams are there. And it's a money-making business first, Fran. We know that. We, we know what <laughs> <laughs> so unless somebody just says, you know, I'm going to, despite, despite this, 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 and this, we're going to win this game. Those are the two teams that I see making it there. And oh my goodness, I've been glued to the TV brand. I, I feel like I'm going to go through withdrawal after next week. <laughs> Got to, you well, have to, you know, and, and great timing because the WNBA slides right in. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So Caitlin Clark, go. Caitlin, to me, she reminds me of like a Ginobili or something, you know. Um, I really like how poised she is. Like she's just, even her interviews, just very monotone. It's very like this. She doesn't <laughs> do many things get her rattled. She don't get too high of her high. She, I do like that she plays with passion. So she will go yeah. like, she will get the crowd involved. She will scream here or there. But for the yep, moment, yep. she's just like right here. And I love that. I love that about her. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a player friend who has a scores mentality that likes to pass almost as much as she likes to score. Most mm -hmm. scores are terrible passers because as they're passing, they're thinking about shooting that ball. So it just never really connects to the person they're passing it to. Or, you know, I've seen a lot of different cases, but she is a rare, rare breed. And I mean, she can shoot it from anywhere. She's very grounded, very mature. But she, most most people who are scored like scores, aren't their best teammates. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like teammates don't like yeah. playing because they're gonna shoot it all the time. You know, I, <laughs> I, play, I play with Jackie Styles. I play with Tamika Catchings. I play with you know. I play with some of the best. And you know, like Tamika Ketchings is a great teammate. Yes, she can score and she could pass. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. very rarely do you find a player like this. And so I'm I'm just captivated by her maturity. That's what I'm most like. Oh, I think she's yeah. a great pro. Wow. I think she's a pro for a long time because of her maturity level. She's got just enough swag, just enough chip on her shoulder to survive, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Players who have been passed it as the star. They had the commercials and they had all this stuff. But then when they got in the league, people came after them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm making this much money? Okay. And so they're, they're coming after them to prove that they deserve to make that much money. And that player couldn't handle the pressure. Like they, they all of a sudden you saw they were injured or they were out or they, they didn't want no parts of it because it was just way too much to carry. I feel like Caitlin is mature enough. She's good enough to carry the hype. And she's going to downplay it. So it's not pressure for her. You know what I mean? So that's what I love. All right. Last question. Does Caitlin translate to the WNBA? And if so, what do you think will be her transition? What do you think that transition will be like? Oh, yeah. She'll transition very easily. She will transition immediately to the Olympic team. You know what I mean? It's going to be a smooth transition. Now, like I said, whenever the media and the league and different entities hype somebody up, the other player is going to come at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're just not going to come in here untouched, you know? Like, you're not just going to drive to the basket and not get hit. So it's going to be tough for her, but I think she is mentally tough enough to handle it. Like, I, I think her transition will be smooth. I think she'll just immediately emerge as one of the stars in the league. You'll see her on – you already see her on commercials. She's got, like, four, three or four yeah. commercials. The college They've been waiting to release those. Yeah. yeah. So she she'll be fine in the pros, but she's she's gonna be challenged. She's gonna be humble, and she's got to stay humble. And she's smart enough to stay humble, and just say, you know, I'm just gonna play my role, and then get out there and dominate. <laughs> yeah. South Carolina or Iowa Sunday. South Carolina. If, if your two teams make it, who's walking away with bragging rights and the trophy and the cap? I think Dawn. I think I think South Carolina. 
I shouldn't say Dawn. I should say South Carolina. Dawn's yeah. done a, Dawn has done a very good job of making it yeah. about the players. Even even Kim Mulkey has said it's about these players, you know. Mm -hmm. So South Carolina's so deep. You know what I mean? Like their their depth is they're just so deep and they're so talented, so athletic. I think they're hungry. I think they want revenge. I think they got a chip on their shoulder, right? I think I think Iowa has confidence knowing that they did it before, they can do it again. Mm -hmm. They're the only mm -hmm. team that feels confident about can we beat South Carolina? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think South Carolina, like Dawn, she's the type of person where if she loses, she she's coming. Gonna, she's gonna come back. <laughs> it's like a knife twisting in her, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She had that feeling for a whole year, just letting it burn and motivate them for this point in point of the season. So I yeah. I'm, I think it's safe for me to say. And I could be biased because I'm Dawn is my girl. She's ACC. I'm ACC. Um, mm -hmm. but I really feel like they have the depth. They have the um, chip on their shoulder from last year to go all the way this year. All right. Where can people find out what you're up to? We've got a website or, or LinkedIn? Or where do you want people to go? And and you Tall Girls United, you were involved last year. We're having our Wellness, Wealth, and Winning Conference. We got an all-star power lineup again for our panel discussion. Cleveland Rockers with uh, Vicki Hall and Tracy Henderson. And then we also have Cleveland's finest, Samika Randall. And it's, it's moderated by Yolanda Moore. And she's going to do like, you know, you have TED Talks. We got a TGU talk. We got the big letters and everything. You know, little Yolanda is dynamic. She's going to yes. turn it out. She's going to turn, turn it out. Turn it out. Boys and Girls Club on Friday. Saturday, we're at Lounge's Content Studio, fashion show, all tall brands. We have the world's first signed metaverse model. She can only wear digital clothes. This is mind blowing. Digital clothes. Well, just so happens, Fran, I have an NFT of my dress. Yeah. So she's yeah, yeah. Model my dress while RJ White is modeling on the physical runway in the physical dress. RJ White, by the way, is a black female who owns a male basketball franchise, professional male basketball mm -hmm. franchise, the Vipers. So she's a, she's dope all in that, all in of herself, but now she's got paws. So this puts our fashion show in the STEM and tech realm. So we've, we're getting a Jumbotron built. We have an LED runway. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. That's 1 to 3 o'clock on Saturday, right before the high school all-star game. We're having a viewing party for people who don't have tickets for that game. It's sold out. So come kick it with us. Good food, good music, good people. We're going to line dance in between on the timeout. So <laughs> come hang out with us. We hope to see you again this year, um, Fran, because you are a veteran of the, the 3W conference. So we hope to see you in Cleveland. Great. Congratulations on everything. Sylvia Crawl, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. We'll Sylvia, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Women's Basketball TV with Fran Harris, the most provocative and entertaining women's basketball show on earth. Be sure to click that like, share and notification button so you don't miss a moment. We'll see you tomorrow.